All right, so hurricane season is just a couple short days away, and in this video, I'm going to show you what to do when you have a hurricane nearing you, what to do with your chickens, because, well, we don't want our feathered friends to die, right? So let's go. So before you even start preparing for this, you need to understand the impacts of the storm. So you need to look at which hurricane category it'll be, and also what you can do. What the main impacts of the storm will be is going to be one of the main things. If it's just wind, well, then you could, if it's weak wind, you could lock your chickens up in the coop for a day. If it's stronger wind than you could do, as I tell you later in the video. But if it's also wind and rain, that's when it comes time for a lot of other preparations. You need to understand what the main things are gonna be here. The last time we had a hurricane up here was in 2021. It was a tropical storm, and the main impact here was wind and rain. There was a lot of uprooted trees over here, and I gotta say, it was a pretty strong storm. All right, so let's just say the storm is very weak. It's not very strong. What you want to do is you want to lock them up in the coop for a day. So if this is really a hurricane under category one, then you might want to lock them up in the coop for a day. If it's a mobile coop like this, I would recommend moving it to the house or to an area where there's limited trees and that if it falls, something can catch it. But if you don't have any of those, I would recommend moving them inside, which I'll show you how to do later. If it's like a shed repurposed thing or even just a in-ground coop, I would recommend making sure the coop is shielded and also, just like secured to the ground in general. You wanna make sure there's sort of like a thing that, <laughs> I don't know, a bungee cord, a massive bungee cord that goes over the top at the very least. If you want like an actual like tarp to cover the coop, I'd recommend tying it to the ground because that's what everyone needs to do if they want the chicken coop to survive out in the storm without being blown over because this chicken coop could probably survive winds probably maybe up to 105 miles per hour. Past that point, it has a threat of being blown down or even just being blown in in general. So that's what you need to know. Now, if there's mandatory evacuations, especially if you're in the south where storm surge is a thing, major rainfall flooding, mandatory evacuations basically means you have to abide by them. So what do you have to do? You can't really bring chickens to a storm shelter, unfortunately. So the best thing you can do is bring them over to a family member's house. You need to look at the cone and then look really far out of it because the cone only shows you where the center of the storm will go. The impact range could be massive, keep in mind, especially with that hurricane, I believe its name was ECS back in 2020. We were not even close to in the cone. In fact, as a matter of fact, we only got a little bit of, a little bit of wind over here and a little bit of rain, but we still got an impact. The wind literally spread as far as Cape Cod from that for that storm. So just keep in mind that storms can have a massive impact depend, depending on where they are and how big the tropical storm force winds are. So I'd recommend going at least two or 300 miles away from your house. And if you want a tutorial on how to move chickens long distances, it's linked in the description. I'm gonna show you how to build the interior of your house. That way it's prepared for this sort of stuff. Oh boy, a thunderstorm is coming in over here. We just got a severe thunderstorm warning on my phone. So you need to make sure that everything is in your house, everything that you need. So food, water, and other basic supplies, like especially treats, because chickens will be real picky. And then you want to make sure that once you're inside, you're going to want to cage them up into something and keep them away from any cats. Dogs are okay as long as they're not like pit bulls, then keep them away at all costs. If it's a cat, keep them away. I don't care what you think. Just keep them away from any cats and also keep them away from any dogs as well. Want well, to make sure that's the case, unless it's like a really friendly great day, then be my guess. Make sure they're in there because you don't want them you know, taking a dump on your floor, now do you? Make sure that it also has um, shavings on the floor. Food and water is provided at all costs. Make sure that's the case in there. And also you wanna make sure the case is that, that your house is really well heated. If you're up in the north where temperatures get really cold quickly or your house just isn't really well ventilated, you wanna make sure that they have the proper heating and water. And if it's like going to be a weaker side storm, then I'd recommend making sure the heat or AC is on. Most of the time it's gonna be the AC, not the heat. But if you're up in the north, where after the storm's gonna be like 26 degrees, like after Hurricane Nicole earlier last year, then that's what you wanna do. You wanna make sure that they're all safe and secured in their coop. All right, so let's just say you managed to ride out the storm and the coop is pretty badly damaged and everything's flooded. You wanna make sure the flood water dies out before you go out there. And you wanna investigate the damage that the water or wind has done. If there's a massive tree down in your chicken yard, hire someone, or if you know how to deal with downed trees yourself, do it, I don't really care. Um, you want to make sure that's all you are out of your yard. Any debris is out of your yard. And chicken coops, I'd recommend repairing it as quickly as possible because, well, chickens really do make a god-awful smell in your house when they're in there for too long. Ask me. 
we had to have a rooster in our house for three weeks after he got bit by a fox. And it really does add up really quickly. So you wanna make sure they're out of the house as quickly as humanly possible. So when they're out of the house, you wanna make sure that they're in the yard, in the yard and make sure their coop is repaired and that they have a good coop to sleep in because if they don't, well then an owl or a fox is gonna come in and snatch off them. And you don't really want that now, do you? Especially after a hurricane, because hurricanes leave a lot of rodents that like foxes and raccoons eat. So you wanna make sure they're really secure. And, and as a matter of fact, extra secure and that their yard is also extra secure. And then if there's any like toxins in the yard, keep them inside for a prolonged period of time. And um, you wanna make sure those toxins are out of the soil, out of the water that's in there. So that way you can provide them safely with food and water. If you're at like a friend or relative's house with your chickens and you find out that your home is completely annihilated, just obliterated by the wind or water, whatever one of the two comes, um, and make sure their yard is, well, clean. And also you want to make sure it's tested for any toxins because, you know, chickens are really good with toxins, I will say. So make sure that's out of the way. And also any like weeds that spawn in after, even if it's just a mainly rain event, weeds will likely spawn in after the event. So you want to make sure you're really cautious around what types of things go out there. And if you found any of this information helpful, be sure to click the like and subscribe button. I want to thank you for the support on the video last time. And also thanks for 5,000 views on that one video from the other day. So peace out and see you in the next one.